Hey, Cody here with GungHoDogTraining.com and in this video we're going to talk about three positive dog training techniques to get you results. Those three techniques are luring, capturing, and shaping. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe to our channel and push the notification bell so that you get notified when we post new videos. If you're interested in getting a free beginner obedience guide, make sure you check out the link down in the description down below. The first technique we're talking about today is luring. And luring is where you use a motivation to draw the dog into the behavior that you are desiring. So typically we use food as a motivation and we'll put that food in our hand and guide the dog towards the behavior that we want them to do. So for example, we're gonna use sit and you would take this food in your hand and you would guide the dog towards the food and then you would lift the food up and have the dog sit down. So let's go ahead and go into the other room and we'll use Chief as an example and we'll show you what learning looks like. Now remember, before we hop over there, there are markers that we're gonna use and there are different ways to use markers or there are different uh, types of things you can use as markers. Most of the time you're using a verbal marker which would be just the words that you're saying and there are markers that will be continual and then there is a marker that is terminal so at the end. So good is typically what I use as a continual marker of hey good you're doing a good job keep going and then once you're at the end I typically use yes or okay and that tells the dog, okay, you've finished the task. Yes, you're completed. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like with verbal markers, and then I'm also gonna show you what it looks like using a clicker as the marker. So that clicker will be the point where you tell the dog, yes, this is exactly what I wanted you to do. Now I'm gonna reward you. Here's an example of what learning looks like. We're gonna have a piece of food in our hand, and it's great if you can hold the piece of food in your hand just like this. If you bring these two fingers together like that, making a V, you can slide a little piece of food right in there. And that makes it easy to release when you want to release at the exact moment. So it's really important when you give the dog the piece of food to have it be marking a behavior uh, when you're luring them and then later you can use either a verbal marker or the clicker as a marker and then give them the piece of food. But right off the bat when you're luring the dog with a piece of food, as soon as they reach that behavior, you're going to release the piece of food and give them that reward. So let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to grab this piece off the floor here. So I got the piece of food in my hand and we're going to bring Chief over here. Chief. So he already knows that I have something in my hand and he's already, he's going after it and he can lick at it, but he can't get to it. So I'm going to continue to have him follow and then I'm going to lift my hand up like this and he sits down. So I give him the piece of food. So I grab another piece of food. We'll kind of get him out of the standing position. We'll lure him again. I want him to come right here next to my side and then I want him to sit. Good. Now, normally I wouldn't be talking at all. I would, I would just be like this. Then you can start to add in your verbal cues. So this is what that would look like. Good. 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 Yes. Good boy. Good, 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 yes, good boy. All right, so that's the basic first step there. And then as you continue, you will start to add in the verbal cue of teaching him what the cue is that relates to the obedience. So let me show you. Good, good, sit, 
Yes, good, good boy. Now let me show you how it works with the clicker. Instead of using the word yes or okay for the terminal marker, we'll be using the clicker and it looks like this. Chief. Good. Good. Good boy. Yeah. Chief. Good. Good. Sit. Good. Good boy. Yes. Okay. Good boy, Chief. So that's what learning looks like. It's really basic. You can guide your dog into a lot of different uh, behaviors. You can see that Chief's already, you know, communicating, responding really well with the piece of food. And typically, I use the learning technique and also the clicker when I'm introducing a behavior. Uh, as the dog learns, I will wean them off of using the food every time, and I will also wean them off of using the clicker. You still want to reward your dog randomly every now and then, and as the dog matures more and more, then you'll reward them uh, less, less amount of times as the dog gets older. You don't want a dog that is fully motivated just on food. You want them to be obedient for the sake of being obedient. Down. Sit. Down. Sit. Good boy. So Chief is at the point where he will be fully obedient and he doesn't have to get a piece of food in order to be obedient. He'll listen to me basically just for the satisfaction of pleasing me and then I also will reward him, good boy, with affection and also sometimes the verbal good boy or just good. And so that's learning. Let's go back into the next technique we're going over in this video is called capturing. Now this is where you reward a natural behavior in order to increase its frequency. If there's a natural behavior that your dog does, like laying down or going to the bathroom outside, then you would want to reward that behavior to a point where the dog wants to do it more often. And once you've noticed that the dog has picked up on that activity, you know, your interaction with that behavior, that they get rewarded when they do this behavior that they already naturally do, then you can add in a verbal cue to try to get the dog to do that behavior every time that you cue them. So let's go and hop back over and we'll go with Chief and I'll show you what capturing looks like. Chief, get a drink. Good boy. Good boy. Here, heel, sit. Good boy. Chief, get a drink. Good boy. Good boy. Here, heel, sit. Good boy. All right, that right there is a behavior that I taught Chief through capturing. Getting a drink is a natural behavior for the dog. Capturing is all about taking a natural behavior and positively reinforcing and rewarding that behavior to the point where you can introduce a verbal cue and the dog will go and do that natural behavior. There are unnatural behaviors uh, that you would see, uh, maybe like a dog uh, standing on its hind legs and hopping around. Uh, dogs can do that and they're typically trick dogs, but a dog isn't naturally going to do that. You got some slobber on your face there, Chief. Slobber dog. Oh, you still got some more right there. Wiping all my pants. It's kind of gross. When using the capturing technique, we're really looking for natural behaviors that the dog will do on its own. And then we're gonna positively reinforce those behaviors to the point where we can introduce a verbal cue and then the dog will do that natural behavior. This verbal cue of get a drink comes in really handy if you're hiking and you pour some water into the bowl and you can tell your dog, hey, get a drink. And it tells them, oh yeah, I need to get a drink. And they understand what that means. You're basically giving a language to the behavior that the dog already naturally does. And so at this point, if we went hiking or if uh, we left the dog out of the house, and we can say, hurry up, go potty. He knows what that means and he'll go and go to the bathroom. Good boy, get a drink. Good boy. 
So I'm saying get a drink to encourage uh, the natural behavior that he's doing. Get a drink. Good boy. Good boy. So as we do that more and more and he hears the words, get a drink, and then there's water, then he will associate that verbal cue with the behavior. The next technique we're gonna cover in this video is called shaping. And this is where you reward steps toward the desired behavior. And shaping is really a great exercise for a dog because what it does is it gives them the mental practice of problem solving. If you have a dog that lacks self-confidence, this is also a great technique to do with your dog in order to build their self-confidence. So let's go and uh, hang out with Chief and we'll do some shaping. You are rewarding the dog as they progress towards the final behavior. And there are a couple different ways to do it. You can completely free shape, which is you allow the dog to just kind of go and you don't do anything until they make a progression towards what you're wanting them to do. The other way is to engage with the dog and help them and guide them along the way. You can use the learning technique in this process and it typically goes a lot faster if you shape while using the learning technique. Free shaping, if you have the time to do it, and a lot of people will say they don't have the time, but it is actually better for the dog to problem solve on their own and to figure out the final behavior by free shaping. And so really, uh, it's to your benefit to spend more time and to have the dog learn what to do. With young puppies, I'll teach them to get onto this place uh, board that it's typically called a place board. It's, this is a metal grate, uh, but I teach the dogs to get up onto it. And I call that place. The verbal cue for that is place. Chief, place. Actually, for chief, it's hop up up. Good. Um, and so anything with chief that I say hop up, it means like hop up onto this thing. Chief, come here. Good. Chief, hop up. Good. 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 That's a good boy. Now he's already learned this behavior, so I'm not going to give him food. Uh, if this was brand new to him, then I would give him a piece of food. But how I teach this with young puppies is I let them go free in the room and then I'm not saying anything. I just let them wander and play around and as they come closer to the place board, I will click and give them a, a piece of food. And then they're like, hey, that was cool. And then they'll go run back over there and investigate and they'll come back over here close to the, the place board again and I'll click and I'll give them a piece of food. Uh, Chief, come here. Heel, sit. Um, and then they'll come over here and they'll put their nose on the place board and I'll click and I'll give them a piece of food. And then they'll put one paw up and I'll click and I'll give them a piece of food. You can see where I'm going. Gradually, I'm rewarding them as they get closer and closer to the final behavior that they want, that I want, and that's for all four paws to be up on the place board. Now initially, they're gonna take a step from here to here, and I'm gonna reward it. That would be step one. And I'll reward that a couple times, but then after a couple times, I'm not gonna reward step one anymore. I'm gonna reward step two. So now they have to take one two steps towards the place board to get rewarded. After a few rewards, I'm gonna stop rewarding that. And I want them to progressively get closer and closer. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna be like, hey, I took a step from here to here, and you gave me a reward, so I'm just gonna keep doing that over and over again. But once you stop, then the dog's like, okay, so I did this, and you rewarded me, but now you're not rewarding me, so Maybe I'll, I'll do that again. And it is in the direction towards what I want them to do, so then I reward them. And it starts to teach the dog, okay, you're, you're guiding me towards something specific. And the dog will, the more exercises you do, the more behaviors you teach your dog through shaping, the more they'll pick up on that process and they'll start to problem solve and learn. Shaping is a great exercise for dogs who lack self-confidence, or dogs who need that mental stimulation of problem solving. And I would say every dog needs that. And so if you have certain behaviors to teach your dog, try uh, doing it through free shaping. And then if 
uh, you're trying to teach that quicker at a quicker level if it's something that you know is really important to you and you're also super busy and you don't have a ton of time then do the shaping with learning and I'll show you how that works chief so he took a couple steps I'm gonna reward him good so he took another another step towards the place for it oh, good he's got one foot up there Oh, good boy! Good boy! Now I'm just gonna give him a bunch of treats because he's sitting up there and he's being really good. Now I want to see if I can teach Chief something that is completely brand new to him. I'm gonna grab a bucket and I'm gonna put this bucket on top of the place board. And what I want Chief to do is I want him to push the bucket off of the board. He's never done this before. This is completely brand new. And we're going to see if I can teach him through free shaping. Chief! So he turned and looked at the bucket. I'm going to reward that. So this is what free shaping looks like. It takes a long time. And because I know my dog really well, oh, good boy. He looked at the bucket again. He looked at me, he's looking at this pouch because he's no, he knows there's food in it. He's sitting down, he looked at the bucket again. So when you're free shaping, you're completely just letting the dog do what the dog does and just being natural. And he's trying to figure it out, but he's, he's confused. And this will take a long time. This will take a really long time with free shaping. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I start to guide him and, to, and step into the situation and kind of instruct him. And I think that's totally fine. Uh, using learning and communication with the dog, you can show him what you want him to do and it will help him learn faster. It's the difference between uh, a math teacher putting a test down in front of you and when you start to draw on the piece of paper, he'll say good. And it would take you forever to learn the math problem if your teacher never explained to you what was going on. And so we have teachers to explain to us what to do so that we can learn quicker and so that's what I'm going to do with Chief here. He has so much slobber, he's such a slobber dog. Come on, Chief. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Good, come on. Come on. Good. Good boy. Come on. Boy, what is a good boy? Come on. So I'm saying come on because that's encouraging him. But now I'm going to transition to saying push, and we'll see if we can teach the verbal cue of push related to pushing the bucket. Push. Good. Good. Push. Good. Once that bucket goes off, I'm going to freak out. I'm going to be so excited. Come on, Chief. Push. Come on, Chief. Push. Push. Good. Good. Come on. Yeah. Good. 
Push. Come on. Push. Good boy. That's a good boy. Come on. Push. Push. Good boy. Good boy. Push. Yeah. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I put a bunch of pieces of food down there. And so that was his first time. He did really good. All right, let's see how he does this time. Chief, push. Good boy. Push. Yeah! Good boy! Good boy, Chief! Good! Good, come here. Heel, sit. All right, second time, that was really good. All right, let's do it the third time. Chief, push. Boy! Set it like that this time. Chief here, heel, sit. Chief push. Yeah. Good boy! Hey, if you have a couple more minutes, I'd love for you to watch this quick tip video on how to train your dog not to bark. It's really just a couple minutes and you can check it out right there. And remember, tell your pup I say hi, and we'll see you in the next one.